think that's if you can imagine tomorrow with a bunch of people that you enjoy working with, then then it's even better if you can make stuff together. And I think that's kind of really what anchored me, not just in the entertainment industry as a whole, but then as I like honed in from like broadcasting to narrative to like other stuff, and then finally to feature animation is like, oh, okay, yeah, like always, always helping, always like trying to shepherd and, and being as useful as you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. That's great. The, yeah, the, um, I, I, just to that point, I, I was kind of wondering, because you, you talked about the broadcasting program in Florida and, mm -hmm. and like from, from people in production and producers that I've talked to, there's no, there's no like clear direct path to that role. Like everyone seems to have their own way there because there's not necessarily courses that specialize in that. And, and I know a lot of creative people that go into those roles because they find that they enjoy it more and they want to help guide the bigger picture like mm -hmm. you're talking about. Can you talk about like kind of weaving through that and, and finding out like that, yeah. that kind of that, oh, maybe I want to move away from, from that end and, and focus on, on that side? Uh, like moving away from live action production or moving away or like. Yeah, I guess, I guess just the way you kind of took your, your creativity and pushed it in the direction of like helping move along bigger picture things and, and helping oh, yeah. people. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, so I, I got my big break um, going from Florida to California to go work at a place called Soapbox Films. Um, and I was hired to be uh, the receptionist and executive assistant. And the reason why I mentioned this is because this was like the first time that I was given the opportunity to start an internship program from scratch. Mm -hmm. um, and so I you know, relatively fresh out of school, you know, within four years, having graduated from college, um, I was like, oh, this is, this is cool. I'll be able to do something at a small production company, scale it up and see what works. Um, and it, I think it was in that moment that I realized, I was like, oh man, this is really fun. Like this is another part of the job that I didn't expect and certainly didn't expect on the path to like learning how to you know, be a producer for live action stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But it was, it was just really interesting of like, oh, this is cool. So when later on, um, you know, kind of exploring different career options um, and got visibility into what it means to be on the studio support side, I was like, okay, now I have like, I think I'm getting closer to finding like part of that self-discovery of always learning like, checking off the things that you don't want to do. So you find out the things that you, that really bring you joy and fulfillment. Uh -huh. um, because I, I realized early on when I was in college, I worked at a football game on the ESPN truck and mm -hmm. live broadcast events terrified me. And I was <laughs> like, okay, I don't think I can go into live broadcasting. I don't think I can go into news or anything like that. So I got to pivot. I got to figure out what else am I going to do? Um, and so I think that experience for me in college was very telling of like, okay, learn very quickly, you know, try as many things as you can and learn what it is that, you know, is n really not getting you jazzed. Um, mm -hmm. I'm all about getting outside of my comfort zone, <laughs> but <laughs> there are some things where you're like, okay, discovery, this is, this is more the path that I'm supposed to be on. And I think that's pretty cool. When you, um, so like you came to California at that time, that was your first time in California and was it a huge, you know, thing for you, like ordeal for you of just kind of like, I'm going out here to make some yeah. true. <laughs> yeah, know, right. Like, I mean, the chasing the dream, right? Uh, so it was about a year and a half after graduating from college. Um, I had a Skype interview in 2007. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was in Florida, they were in California and they're like, how soon can you be here? And I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> And uh, so, yeah, you know, took the, the trip all the way from one side of I-10, Atlantic Ocean, all the way out to the Pacific Ocean. Um, how, how were you feeling at that point? I'm sorry? How were you feeling at that point? I was pretty excited. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, it was a big leap. Um, definitely uh, was 
not an easy choice, but a lot of support from my family, my spouse at the time, uh, or a still spouse, we got married very, very early. Um, but, uh, you know, he always knew what he was signing up for. So like, he kind of <clears throat> knew that California somewhere was going to be on the horizon. Um, and so that, um, I, I, you know, I road tripped with my mom and my brother, what more can you do? Like, it was uh -huh. an awesome, awesome way to bond. Uh, yeah going from Florida to California and, right. and kind of having them at my side. Um, yeah. Do you think, cause Nicole, you, you moved around quite a bit when you were younger. Mm -hmm. Do you think that kind of like prepped you a little bit from moving, like getting comfortable in a new city? And, and cause I know a lot of, a lot of people on here, you know, they're we have such a global group here. And, and I know that's something yeah. we've all had to move away from our homes. Is that something that you were prepped for or? I mean, it's no matter which way you slice it it's tough um you know you you uh have relationships with people you grow attachments um uh if anything i've become more efficient in packing and unpacking over the years <laughs> <laughs> so that part of it has gotten easier um uh but i think one of the joys of coming to los angeles was realizing that um i was going to be part of a, a city where you could literally like taste the entire world and mm -hmm. and you know you did and and to feel like you were um you know just a, a no, part no. of yeah it just yeah just a big tapestry i was like okay that's that's gonna be interesting but it is i mean the first year was a little overwhelming just in terms of like you know i had my thomas guide no <laughs> one you guys are too young for that but printed <laughs> out in my little chevy Aveo, like trying to figure uh -huh. out uh -huh. where I'm going and how to get around. Um, but, it, but yeah, it was, you know, the city can be daunting, but he, uh -huh. I was lucky with building a community of people, had a, a good support system. Um, and so my recommendation for anyone, whether they're moving to Montreal, Miami, Vancouver, wherever in the world, um, or even just 10 miles down the road, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's, it's important um, to, to have confidence in, in why you're making those leaps too. Um, and uh, I'm practical and taking calculated risks. And so it was like, okay, we're gonna go to Los Angeles. And if it doesn't work out, it's fine, but we're gonna try. <laughs> yeah, it, it, seem, it seems like you, you had that kind of mindset that, that's like ready for whatever and, and, and uh, willing to take that leap. Have, have you had any moments where you second guessed what you were doing and, um, you know, kind of felt like you needed to, uh, I guess, um, reroute yourself or, or has it always been kind of like, you know, that, that, that kind of path for you? There's been a lot of rerouting along the way, Frank, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Um, you know, I think, uh, er early on, um, one of the goals was to, um, you know, go from making stuff with my friends to um, hopefully maybe running a business and then realizing that, you know, that's, that's a whole different can of worms uh, going into uh, a production studio, not just to do original IP, but also do service and client work. Um, mm -hmm. And so pivoting from that is actually what got me into feature animation to begin with. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other time was, I think, um, you know, going like oh did i make like an okay choice was um you know like applying for a, you guys talked to the netflix crew just the other day that was my old crew at dream yeah those are your people the goal to ask them for coffee to ask them questions about yeah <laughs> yeah um so basically I was, a, I was an executive assistant and I, at, at DreamWorks and I was like, oh, what am I doing? Like, you know, how am I going to fit into animation? Like, what, what am I going to grow my career? What's that next thing going to be? Oh, that, um, that position was your first position in animation. Yeah, like my first legit studio, like animation studio position was to be an executive assistant at DreamWorks Animation. Wow. Um, and and I you, worked, you worked with Courtney, Erica, and Kim? There, did yeah. you work with uh, Luana too? Uh, not Luana. I met Luana uh, recently. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, how, did you, how did you get that gig, if you don't mind me asking? 
Yeah, yeah, great question. So I was out of work for some months um, and just trying to figure out how to make the transition from live action to from, from really, really small live action studio that my friends and I had to, you know, something in a studio space. I wanted, I never had like big studio experience. I'd only worked in small and medium sized places, which was amazing and phenomenal experience. Uh, but I wanted to see what it was like elsewhere. Um, and so I asked my friend, um, he happened to be a Florida State alumni that I had met through Soapbox Films folks. And uh, I asked him for feedback on my resume. And he actually was kind enough to give it to one of the recruiters at DreamWorks. Mm -hmm. And he got me some feedback on my resume. Um, the recruiter was in charge of recruiting, I think, temps and assistants, you know, for, for the studio. Um, and so I got some feedback on, you know, my resume and how I could organize things better. Um, and then I went back to my friend and I was like, here's an updated resume, just in case, you know, thank, thank them for, for their feedback. Um, and I got a call a um, couple months later that they were in looking for assistance. And so I got into the interview pool for several assistant jobs at the studio. Very cool. Nicole, that seems like a reoccurring theme when I talk to a lot of people in the industry that, that like, you know, we, we've all gone through like little spouts of like unemployment between jobs and kind of taking those leaps of faith to get us to the next gig. And I know you, like you're a person that puts yourself out there. Like you talk about, you know, putting your resume out there and asking for support and help. Can you, can you just talk about that? Cause I, I, I think that's important for everyone to hear is, is just um, like you're an outgoing person, but, but you also just not afraid to put yourself out there and, and kind of throw yourself in the deep end if necessary. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what, it's, it's hard to ask for help, um, you know, especially um, I come from a very proud family. And so um, learning how to ask for help has definitely been um, one of the things I've learned along my 15 years of working in like entertainment um, is, is knowing when you need to say like, hey, I just need to pick your brain for a second or I need to talk to someone. Um, and I will say that um, definitely the LA community and even Florida community just being very open for um, being points of connection to. Um, and so what I found in animation in particular was that when I felt like I was stuck or I needed a fresh perspective, um, there was all there were always amazing women that I could reach out to in um, within the industry to ask for for, for help. Um, and it wasn't always easy, but um, I mentioned that too, because in my transition from DreamWorks to Disney it was another interesting point too, right? Where it was like an unexpected layoff. You don't plan for that stuff. And so you're just trying to figure out like, okay, there's really only like six or seven places in LA that have like a team that, you know, do the things that I was doing. So it's then thinking bigger of like, well, what are other transferable skills? And then like asking people like, hey, you know, Kim from DreamWorks. And she was really kind because she referred me to a bunch of people. She referred me to uh, someone who's now at Illumination, someone who's now at Sunny. So like really amazing women that I could be like, hey, I need a little bit of guidance and help to figure out like, right. you know, what do you think is a good next step or, you know, given my background, is there anything else that I should be exploring um, that I haven't been thinking of? Because you don't, again, I didn't know that these jobs existed 15 years ago, right? So it was, it was just kind of that process of asking questions and, and, and just putting yourself out there. And again, I really thank my, my former boss at DreamWorks um, for, for that, because she was the one that I, I asked her if I could tag along to a meeting. And mm -hmm. she said, yes. And that's where I was like, oh, there's a university relations department and they do this. I was like, okay, that's, that's what I'm doing. Wow. Oh, that's cool. It's uh, like, Nicole, you're such a good planner, like in a lot of aspects, but this industry, I mean, you can plan all you want, but you get all these like little twists and turns along the way. Yeah. To me, that's kind of one of the exciting things about the industry. I mean, mm -hmm. is that something you enjoy about it? Cause I think we've all like, we've all been in a situation where we move cross country and then get laid off and then, but then three other doors open and you find yourself presented with opportunities you never knew existed. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I think you, you 
hit it on, on, on the head there is, um, you know, one door closes and an, another one may open. And I think it's just, it's taking the blinders off for a moment so that you can have that peripheral vision um, and, and, can, and can make yourself available to those other opportunities that you haven't quite thought about before. Um, because I think what's really exciting about this industry is, is I think it's always the future. It's like, where do we want to go? What are the stories that we want to tell next? And, and how do we want to tell them? Um, and I think that's, I mean, that's the whole reason why I started in this to begin with. Um, and, uh, and so to now be at a place where streaming media is a de facto form of, you know, sharing your stories globally um, is, is really cool. Um, I mean, the pandemic has definitely shown that there's a lot of people out there looking um, for creative ways um, to connect um, with folks. And so I think that that's, we'll continue to see that kind of shift um, what the future of this industry is gonna be like. Um, I wanted to ask Nicole too of like, um, um, I wonder if, you know, um, on, during your path um, in, into um, animation and, 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 and movie making, I wonder if you had somebody that you would consider um, a mentor or something like that. I, I, I know that's a, I mean, that's a huge thing for, for you know, people trying to make it uh, break and get into the industry. Um, um, yeah. <clears throat> I, go ahead. Yep. Um, I, what's really interesting is that I don't think I've ever had like a formal mentor. Um, I'm a, I'm a member of, (laughs) I'm a member of women in animation and they just put the call out, you know, to apply for their mentor circles. And I was like, I was a mentor last year, but I might want to apply for that mentor circle. That might be cool. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, definitely there have been people along the way, um, that have been very generous with either their time or their guidance. Mm -hmm. Um, and there, most of those individuals, I have found them in professional settings and, and it's just been either a colleague, you know, that, that has really just taken the time to take me under their wing. So definitely at Soapbox, um, there was several people, uh, production manager, EP, um, the president who was, you know, my director, um, the huge mentors, and I still keep in contact with them to this day. Um, and then of course, um, the, the ladies at DreamWorks, you know, the, the one who actually, you know, said yes and hired me. Um, she yeah. is, I think to this day, I run into her every once in a while, even here in Burbank and, you yeah. know, she'll, she's still a champion. She's like, I'm so proud of you and keep doing good work. And so I know that she's there if I ever, need to ask a question or, or need a resource um, or, or some general advice. Yeah. Um, so I've been very, um, I think it's, it's been nice to find those people in the workplace, but definitely I wish I would have started that earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I would have taken the time, I think, uh, either in college or recently, like out of school to maybe, like, I don't even know, like reach out to an alumni network or something. Right. Like, even just to like try to find someone to, like, right. other then, than a family then, member. And then it's like, how do you do that? Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess yeah. I, I, I had guess. no idea back then. No idea. Right. Hmm. So I guess my follow up question was like, what advice can you give to someone just starting out that is like maybe looking for a mentor or like, um, you know, how can they approach um, like accomplished artists or veterans of like, uh, hey, can you help me out without being too um you know maybe overbearing or any kind of advice that you can give um just like if you're looking for a mentor Uh froze up a little bit oh yeah you're coming back now here you go oh you're back now you're back now who's back are we all back? back yeah Okay. I think, I think we're all back. Um, okay, we're all back. <laughs> yeah, I got the warning of your internet is unstable, and I'm like, oh no, I made it. <laughs> um, Backstreet's no. back. <laughs> all right, start dance moves. <laughs> um, finding a mentor is tricky. Um, I 
I think there's a beautiful thing in finding community. Um, and I will say that my earlier mentors, I guess I found them through my community of like-minded filmmaking peers that I was working with um, because they would introduce me to others, right? And so you kind of, you just start meeting people that you're just like, oh, I want to find out about what you do. And I want to talk to you because you know about camera lenses and that's physics and math and that's hard. So let's talk. And so kind of, I think the earlier you can build a community or even just foster a sense of community, whether it's, um, again, dating myself back in the day, there was live journal before MySpace, before mm. Facebook, before MeWe, before whatever you're on now, but mm. there's all these ways, uh, to, to, to find, you know, people that you can jam with. Um, and so I was very fortunate that, um, you know, not, not everyone will find people in person, especially if you're geographically remote, uh, but the beauty of 2020 um, and what we're in right now in terms of being able to connect um, from our homes is that you can connect, um, you can connect with folks um, all around the world. Um, so I think it's being mindful of how you're making the ask as well. Um, like if you're um, like, Say, for example, I love Guillermo del Toro, but am I really going to email him and be like, hey, dude, can we have a coffee? Because, <laughs> you know, right? And so, so it's like being very thoughtful of like, but no, but really, like, what has this, like, what has this person done that, like, I really want to learn from them? And so, like, I've been thinking, again, goes back to, like, history class and genealogy for me, but I've been thinking a lot about, like, building a family tree and finding records and doing oral histories. So it's like, it's literally like picking the brain of a historian of like, Hey, how did, how did you do this and enter your metadata? Because like, I don't do that. So I need to learn from an expert. Um, so it's, it's under, it's being humble of like humble of what you don't know. And then why you're hungry to learn it from that person and being very honest of like why you want to, why you're reaching out to them. Um, for a conversation, because I don't believe it should be one-sided. Um, you know, I, I'm, that's just my perspective, but it's, it's hard. Cause again, no formal mentor. So like, I, it's my best. I, answer. I, love, I love Nicole, what you said about community, because I mean, uh, you know, everyone watching right now, in fact, the rise up community, like you're at some point, you're going to work with someone in this group and yes you're going to learn from each other. And, you know, we've all done it. I'm sure, Nicole, when you did that music video, when you moved out to LA, you're learning as much from um, like the people above you as you are from your peers. And I yes. know like, Frank, Bobby and I went through training at Disney together and it's, it's the same way. And I just feel like that mentorship can also be peer mentorship. And mm -hmm. I mean, we're all going to work together eventually, uh, which is pretty Absolutely. cool. Absolutely. I mean, to that point, I think it kind of comes back to, um, you know, if you want to be an independent filmmaker, just realize that to do that, you need a, a lot of support. And I didn't realize that like fresh out of school really early on. Um, I thought live action, I was like, oh, you know, you see people one man bandit with the sound kit and the camera and everything. But it's like, no, in reality, like it's, it's better if you have a community that you can bounce ideas off of. And more fun. Definitely more fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So much more fun. You don't want to go down that road alone. No, you don't. You want to, you want to be able to have those stories to tell of like, oh my gosh, do you remember that time that we... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I, I, Nicole, I really react to what you said about like emailing like Del Toro because I, I, like, I remember when I was in college, like of course I could email Glenn Keane, but I could also find like alums at my college that yes. made it to the next step that I wanted to get to. And that was a little more like doable yes. because I watched someone in my footsteps do that same jump. Right. And because I'm, mean, yeah, we all want to email Glenn Keane. Maybe he get back to it. I'm Trent, not sure. Trent, Trent emailed me with that. Yeah. <laughs> a so lot. generous. Hey, Trent. <laughs> email me of like uh and I, I i i only say that story because i was like um trent um <clears throat> trent was applying to the talent development program at disney and guys he went through the whole thing of 
he didn't just submit his reel and portfolio. He set up a whole blog spot, which admittedly is free, to submit to the Taldev program at Disney. It was just Trent Animation Taldev Disney Blogspot.com. He created a whole thing just for that one position, which thousands of people, um, not thousands, maybe less than 100, but um, he, he, he uh, started that whole uh, block spot and he sent me it and he just wanted to get my feedback. And I was so impressed that he went through all these lengths just for that one position. And, um, and he, didn't, um, he didn't even necessarily say, hey, um, here's my block spot, can you check it out? Let me know what you think. But he, uh, he was savvy in that he was like, hey man, how's it going? I, you know, and, and, and he, he had this whole email conversation of just kind of like, um, what are you up to? And, and uh, you know, how, how has Ralph been going? Um, I, uh, uh, I'd love if you can check out my work. And he was really humble about it. And, um, and then he ended up getting uh, the gig and um, we went through training together and now we're best friends. So like, I think the, the, the thing of just kind of like going all out for the dream that you have, I think Trent sort of epitomized that. Um, and, uh, and, and it wasn't even like, he didn't even have like a mentor or anything like that. And I, 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 we'd had mentors in like Talda, but like, um, that was like for six months or something like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, but um, where was I going with that? I, I don't know if I even had a point, but- um, Community, I think we're- Community, community yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. Finding yep. And yep, reaching out in a respectful way, community, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I still remember that, so. You know, I mean, the, the feeling of, of putting yourself out there, and Nicole- So hard. Yeah, maybe- So maybe, hard, you know, oh my gosh. It was so like hard, a, yeah. Yeah, because you're putting your personal, I mean, especially when you're an artist, you're in our fields, yep. you're like, mm -hmm. you're putting yourself out there. And yep. that's, that's hard. Um, Nicole, so hard. actually, I'm curious. Do you, ever, if, do you ever feel that thing, Trent, where you're like, you, you drafted up an email to a professional to ask to look at your stuff or, or mentor you, and you're like, uh, should I hit send? Uh, no. And then you think about it for a little bit, you go away, and you're like, ah, all right, send. And then you're yeah. like, oh, my God. I'm yeah. embarrassing myself. You know. I, yeah, I would do the thing too where you hit send and then I just get up from my desk and don't go back for the rest of the day. I'm like, I don't wanna I don't wanna like regret it or look <laughs> Yeah, you're crap. like, it's out there, it's done, it's out there. Yeah, right, yeah. Right, right, right. It's out there, it's done. Yeah. yeah. Nicole, can you maybe talk a little bit about um like putting yourself out there and and and, and like selling your I like your personality to studios? Like how do you when you were applying for jobs, how do you in a resume like you have this like low outgoing personality. Like how do you sell that in a resume? Oh man, it is so hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah uh, that's that's a t it's a tough one because um, text on on paper, man. Like how do you tell your story? So I I started um, kind of reframing. I think um, when I when I was applying for a bunch of jobs in 2017 before I got to Disney. Um, I was trying to think of like how I can tell my personal narrative in a way that at least will give me a phone call, you know, like not just doing like, this is what I did at my job. I did this, this, and this, like I could, I could put a laundry list of like cash handling skills, scheduling, but like, that's not really compelling. Right. Um, so I, I, I realized that like, until you get that recruiter on the phone or on video chat, like you, to at least speak someone's interest in that piece of paper. Um, so it's taken a lot of work. And even like uh, when I was applying, uh, like before, when Disney hired me, I think at that point I had applied for over, I have a spreadsheet still that has all the jobs that I applied to. <laughs> but it was, <laughs> it was like over 120 job applications and I had like 37 interviews, I think, um, in, in 2017, like in that job seeking era. Um, um, and so it, it became very uh, distinctly, uh, I distinctly remember like trying to figure out 
okay, what is the job that I'm applying for? And then how can I basically say, I am the right person for this job, at least give me a phone call by not just saying these are my skills boring, but by weaving that narrative of like, oh, I see that this is what you need. You're looking for someone to do this. And so trying to kind of connect those dots on my resume um, in some way, shape or form from like the most recent three jobs I have. Cause I don't, I no longer put any of the jobs that I had in college or high school, that's all gone off. So I've, you know, my my resume for Disney was just one page and it didn't have any links to any of the videos I produced because um, I didn't you know I was like this is a major studio I don't want them to look at my indie work and just be like oh what is this girl doing so you you would you would like specialize and cater your work then per the studio oh yeah a hundred percent a hundred percent like I think I had in I remember I had one folder that was all like my application packets like where you have to do like a cover letter and a resume if they require a cover letter for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I had just like my, res- my, like my resume folder. And I think at one point I had over 40 versions, right? Where it was like I had tweaked like little things. Uh, and, and it gets tedious, but it's like, that's, you're making an effort to stand out. You're, you're at least trying to get them to understand who you are just a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I think that effort, pays off mm-hmm. um at least to get a phone call where you can say like i'm really you know express your interest and your excitement and ask questions that will help you learn more about the place that you hopefully want to be at one day mm-hmm. and for everyone out there like how much were you researching every company because i mean you got to go into those interviews with specific questions right yeah yeah well i think it's um when it comes down to the interview part, like, I think at that point, if, if I was going to be interviewed, I already knew like a good amount about that company. And then it would just become a strategy of like trying to find out who I was going to be interviewing with. Um, Mm -hmm. so that I could at least look at their LinkedIn profile and try to find out a little bit more about what they do at that current company. Um, and so I found out like that strategy worked out really well. Um, and I wish I had done that back, like, you know, when in 07, when Soapbox was interviewing me, it was like, yeah, I just showed up and logged in. I was like, uh, I hear you're hiring for a receptionist. I can answer phones. Okay. Um, but I guess like the, like the, the, you know, more websites now like LinkedIn, I mean that 2007, what were the options then to really, I mean, very, very limited options. It was really like leveraging, at least in my case, it was my alumni network that I was trying to leverage. Like what you guys were saying earlier is like trying to find people maybe just a couple of years ahead of you that have a little bit more insight and that can provide some guidance. Um, But I had zero idea about like, what recruiters were looking for on resumes, like literally until I asked my friend at DreamWorks of like, hey, can you just look at this? Because I'm not getting any callbacks and I need, I need help. Um, and so at that point, that really kind of helped flip in my mind of like, okay, I need to realize that I'm not just listing things that I've done. I'm really telling a story here. And yeah. so flipping that in my mind really helped. Yeah. That's great. Reaching out for help. I mean, that's a, that's a big theme. I think we've heard a lot yes. of people don't be afraid to reach out for help. Yeah, absolutely. At, at, at any level, it, it does not matter. Um, it's a, it's really important part of the process, whether you're a creative, a technologist, a production management person, like no matter what your role is, um, know, know when to ask uh, for the help of others. I'm going to put you on the spot for a second and, and just throw one at you. Um, do you have any like big highlights being in the industry? Big highlights? Oh my gosh. Yeah. What is the first thing that comes to your mind of working in both the live action, uh, moving around like you have and, um, and working on the animation side? Um, uh, there's so many highlights. It's going to be really hard to pick one. Um, I think um, one of, one of my earliest highlights was um, working at Soapbox Films and they, uh, they got to do the viral videos for the Muppets, uh, like back cool. when they were getting a resurgence. I remember like the Henson company, like folks coming with like the puppets, like Gonzo was uh-huh. like on set. And I just remember freaking like, oh, 
<laughs> this, is, this is it. This is as behind the scenes as I'm ever going to get with the Muppet Show. Um, and that for me was just like super nerdy and cool. Um, to this day, is Gonzo still like your favorite celebrity song? <laughs> Um, maybe John Hamm at the Mad Men finale, but... Yeah, but then John Hamm... But then, but then Gonza. They're so close, so close. Yeah. Um, but I will, I will, I know we're wrapping it up soon, but I will mention, um, I think one of the highlights, um, and I'll leave on this note, um, kind of bridging live action to um, animation. I think it was 2011. What year did Tangled come out? <laughs> 20, uh, or I think it was like 2010. 2012? I think it was 2010. 2010. 2010? Okay. November 2010. Okay, so earlier in 2010 right. then, 2010-ish, um, was the first time that I ever set foot on Disney Studios, like at all, mm. in Burbank. Um, and it was because the company that I worked for, they were doing the Tangled Lip Dub video where they were wa like running around the studio and ev all of the animators and everyone at the studio was... I that I remember video. That. I remember that. I love that video. So we were a four-person crew, and I'll never forget. It was myself, the director, the DP, and the producer. You were part of the behind the cameras. Uh, yeah. Thing for that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. yeah. Yeah. I was like giving people cues behind the camera, like, okay. Oh my like, god. That's really so ironic. And I just remember like rolling up to the gate at it was like 5 30 a.m or 6 a.m or some you know before the sun was coming up and i was just like oh, i get to go into like <laughs> like this is so cool i was nerding out so hard <laughs> so hard um and little did i know that like oh yeah you can get into animation as not <laughs> artists or not a technologist <laughs> nicole i gotta share something with you because we've known each other a while now but we've never yeah. talked about it. i you know, 2010, I started learning CG animation because Tangled came out. And up until that point, and I don't think this video is online anymore, but it used to be, and I had it saved somewhere. But I saw that video that you're talking about, the Tangled yeah. uh, lift up, and it was the only time I'd ever seen inside of the studio and put faces to some of the names I learned in the credits. Like you're, yeah. seeing, you're seeing Glenn Keane and Lino DeSelvo in the elevator and and you're, you're, you know, there's Malcolm Pierce. And, and I remember geeking out. And when I saw that video, I said to myself, I have to work there. And I, I downloaded a version of Maya and started learning Maya. Uh, like, literally because of Tangled in that video. No way. That's when I started learning 3D. Because I was like, you know, before then I was in school not quite knowing what I wanted to do. Uh, like, I, I wanted to do 2D animation, but I, I wasn't sure where. And I saw that video and I said, I got to work there. That place looks so cool. There's like people on rollerblades. And, <laughs> yeah. and there's a cereal bar. And like, I have to <laughs> like the, Oh, you can drink coffee? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like Matt Roberts. I remember being on there and Death Stone mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, yeah. Just like Lino, Malik, and Adam Green, all of our friends now. But yeah. uh, that's awesome that you're behind the scenes on that and, and now you're over there. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it's Someone totally behind the scenes. Go on the chat and post it out there because I, I, it's it's probably it's floating around. High. It's it, it's a low res version on YouTube. I looked it up. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's still super there. low res. But uh, but yeah, that that is a uh, one of the career highlights for sure. <laughs> that's really cool. That's funny. What a cool that's story. Crazy. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, Nicole, I know we're getting close to the end here. Uh, any final words you'd like to share about your journey? Um, I, final words, put me on I the can, spot here. I can, I, can <laughs> I can ask you, Nicole, about uh, like some of the uh, um, future personal goals that you have, like in animation or in your career. Oh, sure. Um, well, I think it goes back to I've been so fortunate to learn from so many amazing people um, and um, I, I really love because of history too preservation um, so I'm thinking of like you know maybe long term do I want to get like a master's degree in library science do I want to really like go down that route but for now I'm having a lot of fun um, kind of you know, um, getting more entrenched with um, like strategic thinking and thinking about creative talent um, 
in different ways, especially because of the pandemic um, and what the future of storytelling is going to be like. Um, and so I have to just kind of like rewind to like the excited version of myself that I was when I was 18. And I was like, oh my God, streaming video on the internet. It's the thing. Um, and just get like as excited as I was 18 years ago. Um, and, and I'm, and I'm like so close. I'm uh, like, there's so many exciting things happening right now. So I don't know exactly what I'll be doing 20 years from now, but I'm very hopeful, um, that I'll still be within the animation community somehow. Um, Yay. so it, yeah. I gotta say, Nicole, it's like so nice to, um, like to come across people in the industry that are as optimistic about the industry as when they got into it. And, and, and I mean, I feel like that's what our industry shares is a lot of people that just love what we do and we're kids at heart and you have so much energy to you and I, and I love your story. I, I think it's really cool that you shared this with us. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I'm always, again, always behind the scenes and it's, it's really fun uh, that you guys have created this amazing community. Um, and I'm very honored that you asked me to be a part of it. Um, so, you know, final thoughts would just be community. Be kind, ask for help, ask for help. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 f and follow through. Um, I, 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 yeah, I think those are four, four key things that anyone can kind of, no matter where you are in life, in your career, those are no four things that can help. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. No, thank you all for having me. This is. Yeah. Thank you, Nicole. Can I take a yeah, screenshot? thank you. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I don't know how to. I'm taking a screenshot right now. I don't know how to turn on everyone's camera. Um, oh, no. I think, Bobby, try right clicking them and just, I, I feel like you have to do it all like one at a time. You may have to go to gallery view, but I think it's maxed out probably. <laughs> it might be maxed out, but we can hear your silent claps. I, I was researching it like <laughs> earlier today. Um, I don't know how. Let's see. Oh, there's one oh. person. Another, oh my goodness! Another. another there's another. Oh, they're popping another, up now. Another. Watch out, people! Oh my gosh, my friendly Marie is that? Oh my gosh, no! The chat's like blurring by so many. <laughs> Wait, if, if, if if in the chat anyone has any ideas to do this in bulk, we're doing it by person. You guys, I just realized in the chat, like one of my childhood from friends from Puerto Rico. I, I mean, could be common names, this, but I think it might be take like five minutes. Aww. Is this is this Amy Lou you're talking about? No, Limari Reyes. She popped them up on camera. I know. <laughs> and uh, I've seen some uh, student names that I've uh, I definitely recognized from across the years, and I think that's one of the most beautiful things about working in this industry is uh, just staying in touch with people and, and seeing them evolve yeah. and grow over time. Super cool. So cool. Oh my gosh, so many people on here. Oh, that was, that was like 200. Yeah, that, was, that was really inspiring yeah. hearing. Um, unfortunately, I, I was stuck running errands and stuff, but I was still listening in. And um, yeah, it's really cool hearing your path. and. Um, and uh, seeing seeing the the where you are now and just the, your your outlook on what it is you do and in the future and it's like you need more need more positivity like that in the industry. So yeah, I agree. Thanks, guys. It's an honor to to be a part of it. And and Frank, you came with those uh, those thoughtful questions, uh, those deep ones. Thank you. Thank you for for really making me think uh, long and hard about how I was going to respond to some of that. I was like, oh, getting a little interesting. I, I had to consolidate all the questions they had and just try to think of one. <laughs> Frank brings the deep, I bring the shallow. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm at Home Depot. I see people in the chat. <laughs> right on. Right I on. just moved, so a lot of stuff. In there. Oh, good luck settling in, Frank. Oh, oh. <laughs> Are you feeling so they, they, can't, they can't unmute hmm? their, their cameras? I, yeah, I don't, I don't see. Can you unmute it? I don't see. Yes. How do you unmute everybody all at once? That's oh what my someone gosh. just Frank, someone I just think wrote. You already did. 
Oh, Some, someone wrote what? Someone yeah, wrote. You gave I us hello? the ability to unmute hello? ourselves. Hello. Hello. We can Hi, how's it going, guys? Ooh, hello. 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 <laughs> it's gonna get so crowded. We're right here. <laughs> What's this random voices? <laughs> oh, I like Diego and Sebastian, the awesome. Yeah. Hola, Diego and Sebastian. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Gracias, Nico. Gracias, Nico. This is what Superman is. You guys are so dope. Amazing. This is what Superman. Amela platica. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity, guys. Uh, Thank no, you. It's all of this. It's all very informative. It's a wonderful opportunity. I mean, we don't get the chance to talk to you guys every day. So. <laughs> Thank you all for spending uh, your early mornings, your early evenings, your late evenings. They just thank you for being a part of this. And thank hey. you again, Bobby, Frank, and Trent for the opportunity. You guys are awesome for uh, starting Rise Up. Thank you.